doing a read aloud and I want you guys to all enjoy this book and I want you to think deeply after we read the book and we have a little bit of discussion. All right, Gabrielle the Great tries out. Gabrielle the Great tries out. Gabrielle woke up every morning thinking she was pretty great. She sat up in her bed and whispered good morning to the trees and the birds and the clouds in the sky. Poised as a young princess, she gazed around her room, smiling at the art decor that made by her own hands that adorned her walls. She closed her eyes and whispered a morning prayer and thanking the creator for another day. Gabrielle waited patiently for her father to come into her room and greet her as he always did. Good morning, Gabrielle the Great, he would say with a smile, as long as the Mississippi River. He reminded her every day that she was great, just because she was Gabby. Daddy lifted her up and carried her to the restroom, where she prepared for the greatness of the day. She washed her face and hands and body and brushed her teeth and combed her hair. She looked in the mirror, smiled and said, Gabby, you sure are great. She climbed into her wheelchair and was ready to start the day. Gabby was excited because her fourth grade class was preparing for the spring musical. Gabby absolutely loved to sing and dance. She had secretly decided to try out for one of the leading roles. And when the sign-up sheet for the auditions was posted, Gabby wanted to play a character of Charlotte in the musical Charlotte's Web. She had read the story over and over, watched the movie and come up with a unique way to play Charlotte. I hope I can sign up today, she thought. When Gabby descended from the school bus, her friends and an adult helper were there waiting. She kept her secret safe in her heart and did not tell them about her intention to audition for the play. Miss Carey, Gabby's helper, wheeled her into the lunchroom for breakfast. Gabby sat with a group of her friends and laughed and ate. In walked Mrs. Red, the music teacher, and posted the sign-up sheet for the play. Gabby waited until breakfast was over and the other students had signed their names. She then asked Miss Carey to wheel her over to the sign-up sheet. Miss Carey had a surprised smile on her face. Gabby wrote her name on it and went to class. Later in the day, an announcement came over the microphone throughout the school, asking everyone who had signed up for the musical to please report to the school gymnasium. It was time for tryouts. Gabby and Miss Carey hurried down the hall. Several children were in the gym and appeared surprised to see Gabrielle. Some of the kids said really mean things to Gabby. They laughed at her because she was in a wheelchair. Gabby remembered what her father told her. I'm great just because I'm Gabby. She smiled inside and ignored the mean kids. When it was her turn, Gabby read her lines loudly with a smile on her face. She added her special touch that she had been practicing. The kids who were being mean stopped laughing and listened to Gabby. When she was finished, some of them even said she did a good job. Gabby went back to class and was proud of herself for trying out. Later that day, Gabby found out she got the part. She felt good about herself because she tried her best and did not let the mean kids bother her. She remembered the words of her father when she was a winner because she got the part, but because she did not give up. I am Gabrielle the Great. This is a picture, whoop, sorry of Miss Vanessa Bowles, who is Gabrielle's mother. This is a true story about Gabby. Gabby has a condition called cerebral palsy. Um, cerebral palsy, if you haven't heard of it, it's called CP for short. Um, and because a lot of people have a hard time saying cerebral palsy, some kids with CP use wheelchairs and others walk with the help of crutches or braces. In some cases, a kid's speech may be affected or a person may not be able to speak at all. It's a condition that affects thousands of babies and children each year. It's not contagious, so you don't catch it. It's something genetic that we've been learning in science, right? So it's something that you're born with, OK? 
Okay. So kids who are born with cerebral palsy have a really hard time controlling the muscles in their body. And so that's why a lot of them have to use wheelchairs and crutches and different things like that to get around. So I'm going to,